Hi, I'm Harrison, and this is another episode of our 10 Ways to Survive Life in a Quarantine podcast. And today I'm here with Tessa. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, like name, characters, scene. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Tessa DeCecco. I know since my name is Tessa Robert, that's not my name. So, uh, yeah. And I play Jules and Lynn. So, yeah. yeah, cool. Um, so if you could just tell us like um a little rundown about like your characters, like the monologue, like what they're doing in quarantine, that would be great. Okay, cool. So my first character, Jules, she's talking about the scarlet letter, which her English teacher assigned her over quarantine. And she really doesn't like her assignment, but she's kind of like pretending to. Um, and she has a lot of false optimism. She's just, yeah, she's in like the catching up in your study section. So there's that. And then Lynn is an influencer and she's basically doing like a fit check for all of her followers, essentially. We love a good fit check. Yeah. And okay, Lynn is in sleep, live in pajamas and eat chocolate. Yeah. Her section. Um. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, okay, so, um, Tessa, um, this has been, like, kind of a wacky process, and I've talked about this, like, on a couple other episodes with some other people, but, like, I know it's really weird because of, like, I know it's on Zoom. The show is written for Zoom. It's a crazy show, and these characters are, like, so weird and in the best way but like they're really just fun to play and I know that it's like a total different acting style and I know we were all expecting like guys and dolls and everything and I'm going on a rant now but like if you could just like go through like the how the process has been for you because it's been a good we've been in it for a while um it's it's been a lot of fun but um like just like some challenges or even like highs and lows or anything that you found like interesting or challenging I again like anything just yeah yeah okay well I don't know I don't really have anything else to draw comparison on for this because I've never been in any other DSA shows um the last show I did was at my elementary school I literally killed it but that's a different story anywho um I think that's kind of a, a little bit of a challenge in itself is that it's for a lot of people in our grade it's their first show and um at DSA at least and so I think we had to do a lot of like team building with like one of our guest artists and a whole bunch of stuff like that just to get at somewhat of a, I don't know, like even level for starting off the process. Cause I think that has been a little bit difficult. Um, I think it's, it's definitely a very different show than kind of what I'm used to as far as acting style, because I don't know, it's a little bit, it's, it's like very, I don't know. I don't know how to describe like, the show and the way it's written. Um, it's fun, it is. Uh, it's just a little bit different for me, but I think that's been cool and a little bit challenging, but cool. And um, let me think what else I wanna say. Um, yeah, like on Yeah, the oh, I think, yeah, it's just been a little bit um, challenging doing it over Zoom, because I do think you have to um put in some different details and try some different techniques to kind of compensate for the fact that you're not doing it in person you know what I mean yeah yeah it's 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 been really weird but it's been a lot of fun to navigate it um mm -hmm. and it's been a really fun process in my opinion yeah um it's been pretty good but yeah um so thank you yeah um Okay, um, so now just like going into like, um, more of like, I guess, aspects of like your character. Um, well, um, I guess you can speak on like both characters. Um, because I forgot which character I'm supposed to be interviewing on. I'm so sorry. Who I was watching. Um, but like, I love to ask this question because because I think it's so fun to start off with. But um, do you think like if you were in the show, like, do you think you would be friends with your characters or like, do you think you like, yeah, that's the question I'm asking. Like, do you think what do you think your characters would like be like, I guess, in relationship to you? OK, well, my one character, Lynn, no, absolutely not. 
she would be the type of person who I would purposely avoid in the halls or like the type of person I would like check my snap map um, before going to like town center just to avoid them. Like that's the type of character she reminds me of. <laughs> She's just very um, out there, very arrogant in my opinion. And I don't know, she does remind me a lot of like the social media influencers, you know what I mean? But like, I don't know, realistically, I would never even want to have a conversation with her. You know what? I'd probably get a restraining order for her. Anywho, <laughs> my other character, Jules, I feel like she'd be the type of person who I would have like a conversation with in one of my classes and who'd like work on a project or something. But like, I don't know, she probably wouldn't be in my friend group. You know what I mean? I yeah. don't know. I just don't really think her energy. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think I would be per se close friends with anyone who's in the catching up in your studies category you know? <laughs> yeah and more then. of like a, you see in class you say hi to yeah and you like talk to about weird things and class <laughs> and you know, she reminds me of the type of person who I would use those like very stereotypical boring um small talk conversations with like god I'm so tired you know those types of conversations when you don't know what else to say that would definitely be an accurate depiction of our conversations yeah well, yeah, yeah, I see that. Um, a lot of these characters in this show are so, so weird, but that, I think that's what makes them, one, so fun to play, and two, so entertaining and funny. Um, I think that's just what, you know, like, brings that other aspect into it, that humor, um, because of how, like crazy these characters are and because we've all been going ins insane in quarantine and they take like these specific instances and take them to like new lengths and i just think that's really yeah. cool in the writing um but yeah a lot of them are pretty wacky um yeah the, the playwright definitely played up some of the characters so that they were a little bit more just like out there you know what i mean so like yeah. for, for example lynn like i don't know she's basically like in my opinion like Addison Ray, just like times 20. Yeah, yeah, I see that a lot. Um, yeah, and I think it's just like, also because it's on Zoom and like, because it's about yeah. like COVID and everything going on in the world in, you know, the past year, it's been mm -hmm. a year, which is weird to think about for me. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel like it, um, yeah. uh, kind of, I don't know. Um, weird, quarantine time is weird. Yeah, there's like a weird perception of time, um, especially in like the beginning last March. But yeah, yeah, I think it's, I also think that it like very much is March quarantine and not now, because I think we're all much more yeah. used to it now and we've gotten, we've gotten our sea legs. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> um, oh, I also love asking this question. I think it's really, really fun. Um, but okay, I love doing this with my, any show I'm in and um, any character I play, just because I think it adds like that sort of fun element. And also because we don't really have that, because it's on Zoom, we don't really have that aspect of like interacting with each other. And also in the show, I don't think there's necessarily a lead or like oh, no. an ensemble whatsoever. I think it's very equally, because it's a series of monologues that go together. Um, with the host and the co-host leading it. And mm -hmm. I think that's, um, but uh, I'm getting off track, but is there like an unwritten backstory or like elements of your character that you've like uh, thought up that aren't necessarily on the page, but like you think they would like, like their likes, dislikes, that's very oddly specific, but like even like what they would be like in school or like who they would be friends with or what friend group they would be a part of. Okay, well, um, Lynn, my one character, I feel like she listens to Shawn Mendes. No <laughs> hate if you listen to Shawn Mendes. I just don't, I don't listen to Shawn Mendes. I think her top song of 2020 was Despacito. <laughs> Once again, no hate if you actually like Despacito. Just, um, anywho, uh, I, think, I think she probably, she gives me kind of like pick me girl vibes so i think she has a lot of internalized misogyny she needs to work through um i think she was the type of character who i don't know i feel like she's a someone who plays like 
club sports you know what I mean she reminds me of a lot of like the girls that I've met who play like club lacrosse I don't know some very specific types types of ones you know what I mean yes um I feel like she I don't know maybe she has divorced parents I could see that just because I think she wants a lot of validation that she's not getting in her home life. So maybe as well, her dad's just really strict or something like that. Um, yeah. Anywho, I think she has a group of friends who they all say that they're friends, but then they go and they talk about each other behind their backs. They seem like that type of friend group. Yeah. And I think that she, I don't know. I think she has a crusty white dog named Bella. <laughs> And then my other character, Jules, I think that she is someone who, let me think. What do I feel like Jules does? Jules? Ah, gee, I don't know. I think she's the type of person where she, hmm, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I think she has a secret YouTube account where she posts ukulele covers. I think she, <laughs> I think her favorite food is um, prime rib. <laughs> I think she, I'm trying to think what else, what else Jules would do. I feel like she oddly knows a lot about the Revolutionary War to the point where you're like, that's a little odd <laughs> she knows a lot about it no hate um i don't know what else i think she smells like laundry detergent but like good laundry detergent you know what i mean mm. Smells very clean i feel like and i think that she i don't know she gives off like miss frizzle vibes from magic school bus i love miss frizzle um yeah. uh Oh, but that was a very, very well analysis. Um, I don't think anyone has gone that deep that I've interviewed. Most people are just give me a couple things about their character. That was very, very um, specific. Um, but wow. Um, uh, but so I'm getting the vibe that we don't love Lynn. I don't know. I just don't think that me and Lynn are compatible. Yeah, yeah sure. I don't know. She's probably a lot of fun to play then. Um, to like. Yeah, I think it's an interesting type type of dynamic. I um, don't know. I think especially with this show, like we talked about before, taking everyone to extremes. Um, which yeah, also, yeah, definitely. Which also makes it really, really funny. It's a very funny show. Um, yeah, like there's something she says in her monologue, like just straight up saying like, I'm better than you. My life is better than you. I'm very attractive. And I do, I think that's like, I don't know. It's definitely a little bit of a played up version of an influencer, but like, I feel like it's like an influencer if they didn't sugarcoat their words. You know what I mean? I yeah, don't know. yeah, feel that. Yeah, and like, go, yeah. So I think definitely come see the show if you're looking for a very light, fun, heart, lighthearted, fun time. Cause it's a very, very fun show. Um, but yeah, um, so, um, uh, sorry, um, I'm getting off track, um, but, oh, okay. So now going more into like uh, you and like, I guess your like time in quarantine, um, I know, especially looking at these monologues, everyone's going insane, um, especially in March quarantine. I feel like everyone picked up a lot of hobbies and um like I learned how to skate um and a lot of hop a lot of hobbies and um yeah or like a bunch of like Netflix binging um I know that's a pretty big one um so did you like do you have any like hobbies that you picked up or like anything that got you through quarantine yeah um okay well in beginning of March quarantine I was like, I am going to be so productive. And I was like waking up at 5 a.m. for no reason. No reason. Like, who invited her? But anywho, uh, that that version of myself, the like, I'm going to be very productive, kind of like left after one week into the hybrid virtual learning. Um, that was rough at the beginning. It's gotten a it lot. It was. Better. 
I watched Glee. I don't want to talk about it. And when I tell you I finished season six, I, I mean it. And I oh, I love I Glee. Read it. Wait, that that's that's an overstatement. Season, yep, same. I yeah. regret it so much, but I was like, I just need to finish it so that I can get it out of the way. And it was very upsetting. Um, and then what else did I do in early quarantine? I'm trying to think if there's any other things. I I walked my dog a lot, and then. Kind of towards I summer, I actually got a lot into babysitting because I figured out parents like were getting really sick of their children at that point. <laughs> and I figured out a way to do this kind of like outside babysitting, like camp type of situation. And I got a lot of coin, but it was also good because I like working with kids a lot. So that was a good way to spend my time. And then fall and winter, they were a little rough. And I don't know, hobbies that I have right now, I really like watching movies. And then, um, yeah, I really like um, painting. I picked up painting. Actually, let me go get one of my paintings I made. Um, God, I, 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 this is what I made. It's Mr. Potato Head. That, but then um, I accidentally like, I did this like a month ago, but then I accidentally like smudged it. So it looks like he's crying. Oh, Mr. Potato Head. He'll cry. Anywho. That's actually surprisingly I, good. Like, I, I it actually what, it didn't turn out as bad as I thought it was going to. Be. Yeah, I tried to pick up art over quarantine. Um, and as Tessa knows, I tried to like DIY a pair of like Crocs and it didn't go so well. Actually, funny story. Me and Harrison over the summer, we bought these t-shirts and we were like, we're going to do that little reverse tie-dye trend, you know, that was going on on TikTok. People pour a little bit of bleach and kind of create like a little tie-dye pattern. And then we put a little bit too much bleach on it. My shirt was originally purple and it turned brown. And then Harrison started, it started my, disintegrating. Yeah, my shirt and literally went, burned up and started ripping and disintegrating. I think it also burned off some of Tessa's skin. I think it all, it like burned a little bit of the cement. Oh, it was, so it, was it was, it was not a great thing. So do your research before you reverse tie-dye with bleach. Um, that's the moral of the story. Um, See, it, it got so bad. We had to like, we had to like go inside because of the bleach smells were so bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was um, an experience. Uh, yeah. Um, well. Um, I'm just generally not good at the things. Yeah. 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 Some, I feel like everyone tried something new. Like everyone tried a little new hobby or started and I feel I've started a lot of new shows. Um, yeah. Literally everyone burned a shirt through their t-shirt using bleach. That's literally <laughs> normal. General. I just say, yeah. I feel like everyone, not that specifically, but everyone tried a hobby at the beginning of quarantine for sure. Like I started skating. Um, I tried DIYing Crocs. Um, it was oh, all God, those were bad. Those were <laughs> really bad. I'm not I even going to lie to you. I wanted to support you in your Croc endeavors, but it was really not good. <laughs> yeah. So if you, yeah, I really hope you find me and Tessa's quarantine journeys to be entertaining. <laughs> um, uh, but oh, okay. So. Um, I know we talked a lot about like sort of like crafts, um, yeah. but not like of the section. It can be of the sections of the show because I know there's one about crafts, but like if you had a section of the show, like if there was like a character, if like Tessa was a character and like you had your section of the show, is there something like you think it would be about like that your quarantine has been like, I don't know. Crying? I'm just kidding. That was a funny joke. <laughs> um no, maybe mine would be, um, let me think, actually. I don't know. I don't, I feel like I don't. Um, maybe. Gee, I don't know, actually, which one I would fit into. Is it already like, can I create my own new section? Oh yeah, go for it. Oh gee, I don't know. Um, me talking about my pet, maybe? <laughs> yeah, one. Tessa has some pretty adorable dogs. They're very interesting. They're pretty cool. I like I like Ralphie and Hank. 
Ralphie humped Harrison. Fun fact. Sorry, Harrison, that my dog violated you. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, wow. Um, we could go on and on with stories about weird things that happen when me and Tessa are together. Cray, cray. <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay, so another thing that we've been trying to do with this process because we're not able to do a musical, um, there's been a lot, and we still have the same time frame that eighth grade musical has. And a lot of that time is taken up with vocal rehearsals, dance rehearsals, learning choreography, and we don't need to do that. Um, so we have been diving a lot deeper in to it. Like I know a lot of the directors had us take the Myers-Briggs test for our characters, um, but off topic. But um, uh, another thing that we've been doing is that we've been, uh, working in marketing committees, um, and I'm working in the podcast committee. That is what you're listening to right now. Um, <laughs> I think Tess is in the logo committee, um, but um, we have a pretty cool logo. Go check out. Actually, why don't I plug our our show? Um, go check out our Instagram account. It's like I think it's DS. It's Ten Ways 2025. I think. I think that's it. Please don't quote me on that. Um, because I might have gotten it wrong. It's I said it right in one of the other episodes. Um, uh, but uh, that our Instagram account, our TikTok account is linked in the in the Instagram account. Our this podcast is linked. I know Nicole Sigler is working on a journalism piece that will be released um, in the DSA newsletter, and uh, Willow Nuss worked on some amazing posters. They're so good. Um, but I'm getting off topic. Um, so Tessa, um, like, I know there's not as much to talk about with logo as there would be with like necessarily like podcast. Um, but like, how is like, just, I guess like marketing overall, um, like been for you, or I guess like, how is it like, how's your committee been going? What do you, cause it's been, it's been really cool. I think it's been really nice. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, well, hmm, let me think. Well, at first we just kind of decided that we all were going to kind of like split up. I don't know. The way that our breakout room worked for like 90% of the time was a lot of like doing individual work, sharing, comparing, and then choosing one person's work to kind of go on for the final logo and then finalizing the logo. You know what I mean? Because like our first drafts were looking a little rough. Um, my logo did not get chosen. Uh, beef. Hashtag B. <laughs> Just kidding. I actually, my logo wasn't that great. And I like the one that we chose way better. But anyhow, um, we basically just individually created our own logos. Um, I used Google Slides, which I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have used a different website because that would have been a lot easier, like Sketchpad or something. But um, you just, I just created a logo and then we all shared. And we had like a little group chat too. So we could like keep up to track with what everyone was doing. Um, and then we kind of just, we, we kind of in our group chose one that we wanted to do, but then Ms. Han kind of did a collective vote for the rest of the class. So it could be a little bit more um, unanimous and we agreed on a certain logo and then we kind of like finalized it up. But honestly, I think that like for me, the, the marketing work, it was, um, I don't know, like I think that I didn't play a massive role in it, um, but I do have two characters, so I think that's fine. But um, yeah. I think that overall, I think it was a good experience. And yeah. um, we did learn a lot when, um, oh, yeah. uh, oh my God, I'm totally like, John Moore. John Moore. yeah, he came in and, and um, he told us about like how to market and all that. I think that was definitely a very helpful experience just kind of going forward. So yeah. yeah. Um, it's been a great learning experience, especially with time management. Like this has been crazy. Um, figuring out interviews. I know me and Tessa like tried to do it a couple of times, but it didn't work with our schedules. Um, so this one is a little late. Um, it'll be released at the same time. But um, yeah, but um, especially with those lessons, because we had a week workshop with John Moore, and he is amazing. He's great. Um, he yeah and he helped us sort of figure out our commit what our committees were going to be and what areas we want to focus on and even like who we're targeting i guess because um i think it's 
really cool that we're able to do this because normally we wouldn't be able to with our eighth grade show. And I don't think that there is like a marketing unit or anything about mm -hmm. like marketing yourself. So I thought that was a really great experience. Um, so yeah, overall it's been really nice. Um, I think it's a been pretty great overall. Yeah, and um, if you're more interested in the marketing aspect of it, I know that um, do we do, do uh, the Instagram, TikTok, social media, there will be a whole episode about them. I think Ella's gonna be interviewing them for that one. Um, so check out that. Um, it's either one of the first ones we'll release or one of the last ones we'll, we'll release. Um, so yeah, if you're more interested in that, I'd say check that out. Um, go to our Instagram account, go come see our show. The last week of yeah. April, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, by the time you see it, it will be coming up a little, see this, it'll be coming up. Um, but thank you, Tessa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sorry about my dog barking in the background. Oh, no, you're all good. But thank you for coming on our podcast. Um, it's been great. Um, so go uh, come see our show. Look out for Lynn and Jules, um, Tessa's roles. Um, uh, yeah, and um, that's peace. Bye.